The first video was all about carefully studying the graphs of continuous and discontinuous functions. Feel free to check it out. But now, what if I give you a function in an algebraic form and ask you to check whether it's continuous or not at say x equal to 1? One way to find out would be to neatly sketch its graph to scale, if we know how to, and this graph will give us the answers. But sketching a graph takes time. And anyways, this is not normally how we do it. Although one can always use the graphical method for verification in the end, but conventionally, we check the continuity at a point by using the algebraic definition of continuity. Okay. We will come back to this example some other time. In this video, our focus will be purely on understanding this definition. The definition reads as, a function f is continuous at a point c in the domain if left and right hand limits at c are equal to each other as well as equal to f of c. It looks slightly convoluted but it's actually not difficult to work with the examples if you know how to evaluate limits. But first, we will try to understand its abstract structure through a nice but effective bit of reasoning. Now let's say that we have some function f defined for all real numbers. And let's say we want to check its continuity at a real number c. We don't know anything about this function or its graph to comment anything about continuity at C. But one thing that we can all agree upon is a simple logical fact that F can either be continuous or discontinuous at C. It cannot be both or neither. Here's a question for you then. If suppose F is discontinuous at C, then what will happen to the graph of the function at that particular C? This is a graph of a discontinuous function that we'd seen in the last video. We observe discontinuity at three points, x1, x2 and x3. The point x1, f of x1 on the graph is not connected with the part of the graph on its left. This point is not connected with the part of the graph on its right. While this point is disjoint from both the left as well as the right partitions. The similar argument can be modelled for our function f if it's discontinuous at a point. The point c, f of c, no matter where it lies on this vertical line, it will not be connected with either the part of the graph on the left side or on the right side or even both. And this is irrespective of what the graphs are on the left and the right and as said earlier, irrespective of where this point lies. So now, what will be the opposite of this argument for a continuous function? Yes, if f is a continuous function at c, then the point c, f of c will be connected to the parts on both sides, at least up to some extent in the neighbourhood. Again, it does not matter what the graphs are on either side or where the function is defined at c on this vertical line. It can either be a piecewise function defined differently on either sides of C or it can be given by a single nice and smooth relation in that particular neighbourhood. Either way, we are guaranteed that as long as the graphs on either sides are connected to C, f of C, function is continuous at C. Also, we can't predict anything about how long this connection will extend on either sides. But theoretically, we are assured that point c, f of c will be connected with the graphs on either side in some neighbourhood around the point, no matter how tiny or huge that neighbourhood is on either side. So that's a neat way to conceptualise the continuity at a point. The math in the definition specifies this very notion of connectedness in the language of limits. Here's how. To bring in a little more clarity in the explanation, assume this is how the graph of f looks like in the vicinity around point c. Take any variable x close to c in its left neighbourhood. Also mark f of x on the y-axis. Since the graph is connected between these two points in this neighbourhood, as x approaches c, 
f of x will approach f of c. In the language of limits, this means limit of f of x as x approaches c minus is f of c. Minus sign indicates that we are approaching c from the left hand side. Similarly, we take a variable x in the neighborhood now to the right of c. And again, since these two points are connected, here as well, limit of f of x as x approaches c plus will be f of c. Plus sign over c is an indication that x approaches c from the right. So all in all, if a function is continuous at c, both its left hand limit and the right hand limit at c will always be equal to the value of the function at c. This implies that the normal limit, limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c. And that is the most bookish definition of continuity. Now obviously the converse of the statement is also true. If a function satisfies this at a point, it is continuous at that point. Starting from the next video, we will start seeing a few examples to determine continuity of functions at points. So I hope after this video, the definition of continuity makes more sense. By now, you would have realized that we're going to need the knowledge of limits to study continuity. Hence, I invite you to watch our video series on limits. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye till then.